Uh, the hour 5.30 having arrived, I will call to order the Tuesday, August 25th, 2020 meeting of the Beale Early Childhood Center Building Committee at 5.30 p.m. I have to read this script as you're all used to at this point. As a preliminary matter, my name is James Kane, chair of the Beale Early Childhood Center Building Committee. Please permit me to f confirm that all members and persons participating participate on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Erin Boucher. Keith Baldinger. Here. Bob Fox. Here. Patrick Collins. Here. <clears throat> Christopher Girardi. Sandra Fitz. Here. Kevin M Mizikar. Present. Joe Sawyer. Here. Staff. Oh, thank you, Joe. Uh, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Alexandria Martinez. Present. Thank you. Anticipated speakers on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. Deb Share. Walter Hartley. Here. Deb's here too. John She's Brennan. just trying to find the mute button. Here. Great. David Fontaine Jr. Here. Fred Paya. Fred Paya. Here. Frank Paya. Sorry about that, Frank. Here. Okay. Good evening. The open meeting of the Beale Childhood. Center building committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor's Baker, Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public meet gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in the publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Beale Early Childhood Center Building Committee is convening by telephone, conference via Google as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules. I, James Kane, will introduce each board member or staff member who has a lead role in this particulate, particulate item or a guest speaker associated with the item on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members first and then to staff members inviting each of them to provide any comment or questions. I will then call upon the members to offer a motion. And then for a second, please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that generates accurate minutes. For others in attendance, they are expected to participate. Please hold your name until the call is, uh, is called to, to present. Please remember to mute your phone when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in such a way that helps generate accurate minutes. After your presentation, members of the committee will be given the opportunity to ask questions. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Uh, did Sandy join us? Okay. Given that Sandy is not here, we're going to no, ask I'm Kevin here. to make. Oh, Sandy. They... Oh, okay. Are you are you there, Sandy? I'm here. Okay. The connection um, is horrible, so we will uh, continue along with the practice of you making the motions and Kevin seconding them for clarity during the meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, Five thirty. We called the order. Called the me the meeting to order. Um, we have no a minute meet, no minutes to go through at this point. Item three, the project financial documentation review, review and act on the following Fontaine Brothers Inc. change orders. Uh, review and act, excuse me, um, menu at one change order 003 dated August 14, 2020, $7,630 increase to the GMP drawdown on owner's contingency. Menu at two, a change order 003A dated August 14, 2020, zero increase to the GMP drawdown on the existing GMP allowances. Uh, members of the building committee, prior to turning it over for a further explanation, I hope you found Walter's memorandum dated August 24, 2020, helpful when sent around by Kevin. I think it, uh, although I know we all enjoy reading the reams of paper associated with the change order request, let alone the approval. I found that his uh, memo dated on August 24th uh, was rather succinct and, and drew it all together. Uh, Walter, do you want to give us um, 
the highlights uh, on this request? Walter, are you there? Sorry, I was muted. Um, That's okay. Yep. Uh, seeing that everyone has it, I guess we could just, if there's any questions on them, unless you want me to read through them, Jim. No, I'd prefer that you don't. Um, okay. Board members, uh, board committee members, uh, are there any questions stemming from this effort? Molly. <laughs> Sorry about that. Get over here. Come. <laughs> Sorry about that disruption. No problem. Uh, board members, any questions regarding uh, item 3A, Minuet 1, Minuet 2? If there aren't any, uh, is there a motion? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. <laughs> All those who are in favor will signify by aye when I call the roll. Ms. Boucher? Keith Baldinger? Aye. Bob Cox? Bob Aye. Cox? Aye. Patrick Collins? Aye. Christopher Girardi? Sandra Fritz? Aye. Kevin Mizikar? Aye. Joe Sawyer? Aye. James Kane? Aye. Thank you all very much. We're unanimous. Moving on to item 3B, review and act on the following bill schedules and warrants, vendor expense item and amount. Fontaine Brothers Incorporated, requisition number 18, $3,633, excuse me, $3,633,764. LPAA Inc. invoice 1717-2007, $69,545. PMA Consultants LLC invoice 04110-38 in the amount of $73,108.33. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, uh, could I have a motion? Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Ms. Boucher. Uh, Mr. Baldinger. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Mr. Collins. Aye. Mr. Girardi. Ms. Fritz. Aye. Mr. Mizikar. Aye. Mr. Sawyer. Aye. Mr. Kane, aye. Item four, here reports, review, and act on the following matters. Report from the owner's project manager, Project Financial. Deb, Malta. <clears throat> yeah, hi, so um, this is Deb here. Uh, if everybody got the budget uh, summary, uh, dated. It looks just like it normally looks. Um, our budget is the ninety-two million, two thousand one fifty-nine. All of the uh, contracts are the same, except you'll see that we've added ten point two that was approved at last month's meeting to Fontaine's uh, contract value. So that contract value is now seventy-two million six fifty-eight two fourteen. Um, invoices through July are thirty-eight million three seventy-seven two hundred two. Being us a balance to finish for the entire project, $1,624,957. The encumbered to date uh, is just up from last month for $17,000. So we're at $83.9 million with project, uh, total project budget remaining of $8 million. Uh, the pro-pay submitted today, we actually did a pro-pay submission after this summary was sent to Alex and, and to you folks. So the total pro-pay Submitted to date through program number 25, which was submitted yesterday, is 34 million 603 763. Reimbursements the same as last month because we just sent it in yesterday. It hasn't been processed. We anticipate a pending reimbursement for eligible costs in Pro 25 to be 1 million 983 781. And that's that's the update in a nutshell. Comments or questions from the committee? Not hearing any. Thank you very much. Item 4B, report from the architect, Mr. Brennan. Good evening. Um, I was on site earlier today um, for our weekly job meeting, and I was 
sure to take some photos so I could give you guys kind of a photographic tour of how the site works due to COVID. I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that. Um, also wanted to kind of highlight the things that we are very excited to see uh, coming through fruition in the field. Um, so what I wanted to start with was on Lake Street, as we know, uh, quite the big undertaking uh, with the realignment, uh, flattening of the, the horizontal and vertical alignment. As you can see, it's a nice ease um, slope on either side. And what we're going to do first is approach further down to the south. As you can see, the Shrewsbury Youth Soccer fields are starting to be in the background there. And then what you're about to see is when you turn right, how the building will present itself um, as you're going south on Lake Street. Uh, for those of you that may have forgotten, uh, the large lobby feature that carries through the building is seen in that bluish purple color in the middle. Kitchen and serveries to the left, admins to the right, and then the academic wings fall off to the back. Um, this is uh, if you entered in the southerly um, entrance and looked towards a paved play area. The large window you see on the right is the cafeteria. The window next to that, teacher dining, and then the music room. And then that little slot of space you see right before we start looking at the brick on the left is where the student um, drop-off will be for the parent drop-off loop. Uh, as you can see, masonry is well underway. Um, the whole easterly side of this wing has been completed which is very exciting and we're starting to get prepared for installation of windows. Um, as you may saw from the rec, we're uh, right at like 50% requisition. So the building progress, as you know, is in alignment with that. So it's a very exciting time. I highly recommend anyone if they have the chance to get out there. Uh, I will happily volunteer Frank and his team to give you a tour. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely try to make it out there myself, but it, it's very exciting. So if we go back up to the northerly entrance. If you started turning towards the site, the large upper beach tree where we're going to have an outdoor classroom, as you can see, you can really start to see its prominence on that hilltop. As you start to head down the northern uh, ring road entrance, this is where parents will come in. You see off to the west, uh, UMass Memorial, Belmont Hill, Worcester Hills overlooking Lake Quinsig. As you get closer, uh, what you see in the foreground where the road splits to the left and then also goes around to the right, there's going to be a large uh, play field here. And then kind of where that trailer is just further behind that is going to be where the kindergarten playground is with direct access out of the building. Uh, this is the first glimpse you get of the building as you enter that northerly drive. Uh, as you can see, the administration, the larger gymnasium is the higher volume and then the, the main lobby feature wall. Um, as it carries through through the building. As you come further down, uh, this is how the building starts to sit into the site. Very nice presentation on the front as far as uh, very, you know, not overly imposing uh, for kids of this size and age group, much like we were hoping it to be um, as you get a little bit closer. And then what you're about to see, one thing that uh, LPA always strives to do is having a strong connection to the outdoors. We feel as though it it allows people to really orient themselves and, and, and reduces the scale of the building quite a bit. So the photos you're about to see are some of the really exciting opportunities we see that we were able to achieve in this design. Uh, this is looking out the back of the media center. So if I go back on that large kind of L up and over roof shape it carries all the way through the lobby and out the back. So if you look on the left-hand side, it's not fully articulated here, but it will be when the finishes are up. That L kind of comes up the left side across the top. So this is the view into the courtyard between the two academic wings out the back. Um, these are two separate stair towers. So it's two separate pictures on the um, left and right. One is the end of the B wing looking out south. Uh, that's the Shrewsbury Youth Soccer Fields, and the other one is the B Wing looking over the paved play area easterly towards um, Farmer Paquette's Fields and in, in, in back in that direction. Um, here is a view out um, the kindergarten wing, which is on grade. Uh, there's some insulation being stored uh, just outside the, the main window there. There will be a vestibule here also. Uh, this is where they'll have direct access to their dedicated playground space for the younger students. Uh, you can barely see it, but those of you that have a sharp eye, 
just above the insulation on the left, you see a little tan square. That is actually the gymnasium at Sherwood. Uh, during the winter, ironically, you, you see Sherwood in all its glory um, and, and get a little small glimpse of oak also once these trees thin out a little bit. So interesting to, that you can see the two from, from each other. Uh, the other interesting and very exciting is uh, while you're getting your lunch, uh, this is the view you'll have back out uh, the front of the school um, and looking up at that copper beech tree that we maintain in that outdoor classroom. Um, the kind of pastoral setting of this school is, is fantastic and, and you're all going to be very, very excited. Uh, as you can see, I am uh, to, to go out there and, and share in this. And then lastly, uh, this is that large window I talked about, the gymnasium, uh, uh, not gymnasium, excuse me, the cafeteria, large window that looks out the cafeteria over the paved play area uh, towards the Shrewsbury Youth Soccer Fields. And that concludes our photo tour of what the site looks like today. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Sean. Any comments or questions for the architect? Thank you, Sean. Item 4C, report from the construction manager, Frank. Yep, hi everybody. Yep, everything, um, I was with Sean today. Uh, I e echo everything that he shared and showed. Uh, basically the underground infrastructure is all in. Uh, the only note is that the town has hired uh, an independent firm to run a sewer line out the uh, west end of the site and that is progressing nicely. It's not interfering with us at all, but that's the last piece of underground utility that really has to happen. Uh, I don't know if you noticed the uh, uh, curbing going in, the granite curbing for the site work, and we are basically working our way outside the perimeter in towards the center of the school. And on the inside, as, as you saw in a photo, all the mechanical disciplines are in full swing. Uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, sprinkler, and a drywall company is in full tilt. We're running around 100 men at the moment, which seems to be uh, a kind of a steady. And uh, I, I don't anticipate any issues moving forward. All is going well. Thank you. Any comments or questions for the construction manager? Frank, so the schedule it, it continues to hold? Yes. As we come to the end of summer and you're looking to fall and winter, any particular concerns relative to seasonal work or will you be, for the most part, inside at that point? No, we hope to have the exterior of the building wrapped up. If you saw the masonry going up and the windows, we're testing the windows hopefully Friday and uh, hope to have the exterior buttoned up before the snow flies. Beautiful. Thank you very Mr. much. King, could I ask a question? It. Of yes. course, Mr. Collins. Just wanted to see if we could learn a little bit more about the um, outside um, plantings, grass, sod schedule, um, and how that is being planned or, and or coming along. So it's, it's actually, we've hired the landscaper, which is EDI out of Hartford, Connecticut. They're a very good firm. They started the uh, perimeter slope and uh, the side on the inside going towards the parking lot with the hydro seating. So again, they're working their way from the outside in. We're going to go to the Black Beauty uh, for the inside sod, and that, <clears throat> that is all moving nicely. But that won't happen till till next spring. We're going to get as much as we can in this year but I don't see any plantings going in this year. Okay, and just for clarification and to be, uh, or to confirm that um, when we open next fall that the field adjacent to the gymnasium, which would be used for phys ed as well, would be accessible to us for yes. fall opening? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Not seeing any. Uh, we'll move to item five. Set the date for the next meeting, which I believe is September 25th, the fourth Tuesday of the month. And that will go back to six o'clock. I greatly appreciate the flexibility of the committee members making it for 530 today. If there isn't anything else to come before the committee, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. 
Second. Motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. Ms. Boucher? Mr. Baldinger? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Mr. Collins? Aye. Mr. Girardi? Ms. Fritz? Aye. Mr. Mizakar? Aye. Mr. Sawyer? Aye. Mr. Kane? Aye. Thank you all very much. We will be adjourned until our next meeting, September 25th. Thank you all very much. Good night, everybody. Thanks. Have a great night. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Bye.